Hey everyone, happy to have you here for another episode of Legacy Matters. Today, as usual, we will talk about whatever comes up with a slight leaning toward discussions of preserving your legacy, preparing for things to come, and sharing stories we find amusing. Okay, before we start the show, I would like to announce our latest venture, Company I Founded a cultivated community for builders, creators, and innovators. We're hosting our first private event this Sunday, October 14th, at Copper Wing Distillery in St. Louis Park. This event is sponsored by Master Switch IT and the Bootstrappers Fund. Learn more at companyifounded.com. Now on with the show. Okay, well, welcome. Uh, today you're here with Jim and Sam. No, Sarah. Sarah couldn't make it today but it's a uh, we just lost know. a third of our listeners i know with her dad at least yeah probably half maybe i don't think you and i each make up a third no we don't no. we definitely don't <laughs> but here we are with legacy matters another episode um it i'm gonna just say like it is a beautiful day today wednesday afternoon gorgeous sunny kind of has that perfect temperature not too hot like a high of 70 something 70 ish yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. we'll we'll remember this when it's winter um (laughs) yeah and and some poor listener six months down the road is gonna be like what are they talking about it is 42 degrees below zero we live in minnesota it's It's not even six months let's face it uh winter is coming winter is coming but not today. Not today. So. No, it was, it was gorgeous. I do love fall, and I hope we continue on with a, a nice fall. Mm-hmm. But um, what else have you got for us? Well, as always, I would like to thank all of our listeners for listening to us. Thank you very much. I mean, that that's a wonderful thing, and we're very appreciative of uh, everyone who's tuning in and, and listening. And thanks for the comments, the ones that we get. They're pretty good, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, we get very few of them. I will we say do. that. Uh, it would be nice. And and this is something that we've said it every, every single time. But uh, we talk into these microphones as if we know whether people are listening or not. And then if you don't respond to us, we kind of don't know. So if you could take the time to give us a little a little feedback, even if it's even if it's not positive, I can handle it. Um, we'd appreciate it. I right. love it. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you. Uh, we do have a guest today. Uh, you, I, we have Husnia uh, Dent Bradley in, and I, I, always, I always worry in the moment that I'm going to screw up names, so I always have that weird hesitation. Jim does it, too. Uh, but thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Thank yeah. you for coming in. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and... Uh, we again neither of us know very much about you um but i do know that i think you were 63b if i'm not mistaken that you were running for state senate is that right yes um the minnesota state house for 63b state house yeah and i think god i should know because i am somewhat politically active i think i'm 63a could be so you were you over in st paul no this was in minneapolis so it's um in the south, like the southern eastern portion, yeah, around like Lake Hiawatha, Lake Nokomis. That's my and neighborhood. Around that area. So it's either you. So yeah. you're close. No, I think. Well, was it is Gene Wagenius the the incumbent there? Was that the the district? Yes, that is the same district. That's my district. Yep. I did vote for you, actually. So you oh. know, uh, it, it. This has been a while. I found out. I found later that you were found you some other way. But uh, I am 63B then. And oh, wow. that's how I recognize your name. And I do, I do, oddly enough, attend my political, my local political act- activities, which, um, man, I got to say, sometimes they're so boring. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, it's more about business or talking about um, what needs to occur, you know, to get ready for caucuses or conventions and stuff like that. Yeah. But as boring as it is, it's interesting, too. And it's so, important. So how do you make it not boring? Well, 
I guess definitely being a part of the meetings and going in and um, meeting some of the neighbors in the community. Um, during the meetings, even though we're going through the agenda, you know, I might insert different things that um, I've heard from the other districts since I'm involved or I have been involved in the whole um, 5th Congressional District. And so there's different um, activities or even like barbecues or something that happens in another part of the district that I might bring to that meeting and, and mention it and it gets other people interested in going outside of their district. Good. Well, I think this is a case I'm slightly embarrassed for not having done a little more research, but I do, I knew I recognized your name and I couldn't remember the whole deal, but um, like, so, so you were up against Gene with Genius, right? Yes. So leading up to caucuses, so when we had the um, precinct caucuses in 2018, there were five people running for um, the Senate District 63 um, position. And that's after delegates are selected at the caucus, then they're, um, they go on to the um, convention, which is probably like a month or a month and a half later. And, um, and, and all of the candidates are running at that convention. Yep. Yep. And I think I made it to the caucuses, but not any further than that this year. I just didn't have, I was out of town or whatever, but, uh, yeah, Jean's been, Jean's been in there forever. Not that I, I, I don't know. Again, like I like I said, I warned you. I don't like to talk too much about politics, but uh, as much as Gene has been a service and everything, I sure it will. Well, we be. have to talk about politics. I know we have to. We've got a political. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's true. I should just just get yeah, comfortable with it. Um, we could. Let's but, go. Let's go. <laughs> but we. But Gene's been been in there forever doing her thing, and I, I, you know, I think my my thinking on the whole thing was uh, it's it's maybe time for some new blood in the in the different seats around town like let's let people with different viewpoints and different perspectives get in and do some work so yeah i think that's a good viewpoint um i also heard from other delegates or other people that are involved or came out during um that year to vote that you know they did, they had no idea that they there were other people in the district that were qualified to be able to um, run for state house or to be able to take care of their district at the state legislature and I think that it opened up people's minds even though not everybody voted that way <laughs> um, sure. definitely at the convention you know, <laughs> of course Gene won yeah um, <laughs> but you know that's because of the support you know that she's had over the years and the in the different supporters that helped you know galvanize her campaign and get her there but yeah it's kind of one of those things it's a double-edged sword to me like you, you you can't cut out all the institutional knowledge by getting rid of all the people who've been there forever but at the same time you kind of have to have this cycle through of new people to get mm-hmm. new ideas into local politics and i do think you know that it plus local politics should look like our local areas and i think you know if if you've got people there for 30 40 years whatever it starts to not represent the the actual population of your neighborhood mm-hmm. so i think it's uh yeah that's uh, true yeah and we see it in other districts where in the last year other people have been elected you know other than the incumbents so yeah. you see more of a changeover in leadership and new ideas coming forth um, at the state legislature and then also but even though they're knocked down once they go to the senate um, but hopefully that will help the state open up more in in being I guess more progressive in the future yeah and I think uh, Minnesota is uh, is a, has always been a fairly progressive state but we're facing newer issues this is a this is a new generation coming through so I, I appreciate the idea of some new faces. So are you, uh, where are you from? Are you from Minnesota? I was raised in Minnesota. I was born in Chicago and then my parents moved to Minnesota when I was five years old. So I started school in Minnesota. Okay. That's where, pretty much where Minnesota. Did you, yeah. Where'd you land in Minnesota? 
in South Minneapolis and I went to school up to junior high school in South Minneapolis and then I went to North High School and I was in the Sumatech magnet so that was um, in the 90s when they had magnet programs yeah. all throughout the city okay yeah. and and how how when did you start getting into the path when did you set that path that you're on right now well I will I've always been kind of like been involved with issues or even in high school being involved with the urban league and and helping out um at school on different committees but probably when i went to college and i went to college at spelman college in atlanta georgia okay. and at that time um I think it was right after my freshman year I returned and I was working downtown at Talbot's and walking um, during my lunch break and then I ran into Senator Paul Wellstone mm. and we had a conversation and, um, and you know he asked what I was doing and stuff like that and he said oh you should get involved and and um, and so then when I returned to school I helped out on the campaign that was going on in the Atlanta University Center and helped with registering voters and stuff like that. I mean, to have Paul Wellstone, like, that's, that was your sort of entry, huh? Yes. That's, well, I, or at least, one, you know, someone that referred and had a conversation. Yep, I would say that, you know, you know, after having a conversation with him, then I got more involved, like, on the organizing type of side of things. Yeah. Yeah, but he was an inspiration to a lot of people. I mean, yes. yeah, huge, he's yeah. quite a guy. Uh, and and so, are you a are you a, an attorney? Is, are you a trained attorney? Is that right? Yes, I'm a lawyer. I don't practice when I'm a lawyer. Okay, so law school. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah. I bet that was fun. <laughs> it was interesting. Um, it was a different way of thinking. So, like, um, like I mentioned, for high school, I was in Sumatech, and so I mostly dealt with science, math, and technology. And then um, at Spelman, I had, um, well, I have a chemistry degree, and so I came back to Minnesota, worked at a pharmaceutical company, and so I was mostly, you know, in labs and stuff like that. And so then I started school at William Mitchell. Um, at night and so it was interesting at the, at the beginning because I had to balance um, both working and then going to school and then eventually mostly just going to school but um, it was a different way of studying and it was a different way of thinking and so but it used my analytical skills a lot sure. yeah so uh, chemistry chemistry <laughs> degree and then law school <laughs> I know Different mix. So a little that's, ambitious. That's a good mix. <laughs> that's a very it's good different. mix. Yeah, I like it though. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. I feel like I I could only say dumb things at this point. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like no. I mean, the reason I guess there's a couple of different reasons why I got um, interested in the law, and I think um, when I worked as a chemist, and even now, like I've always wanted to help people in. I didn't know if I was helping people in the most way that I could. And so then I saw different things going on around the city where people were reacting, you know, to incidents or even marching to the Capitol and stuff like that. And so then I um, just thought that I could be of better use, maybe. Yeah. And become here, even though I don't know if that's true now, <laughs> but <laughs> it's just. But you're you're motivated that, by that. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the the training to be yeah. a lawyer is is good use of your time to learn how to do different things too. Like you said, you're not. I mean, it sounds like you're not. You're not a chemist nor an attorney at this point, but you've got these great <laughs> skills, right? <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> For for a long time, I guess I've worked in the legal field, and so like you know, thirteen years or so um, working at a company, and it was mostly like attorney editor type work because they have a lot of attorneys that work with them. And in the last couple of years, I've probably gone back and forth even with contracting and stuff like that with those type of companies, but then also um, working as an organizer. 
and so like in 2016 I was um, sent to North Carolina to help out on the election for the last four months um, with the North Carolina Democratic Party and um, in Hillary Clinton's campaign. Yep. And so then when I returned, um, I worked as a campaign organizer and that was definitely dealing with like the Minneapolis election that was going on and um, working with the unions and some other people, you know, to get people um, galvanized as delegates and to um, introduce the candidates to the community for votes and stuff like that. So I've done like a mixture of stuff, but I've used my skills in different, like a different variety of places. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point of college. You don't necessarily go to learn exactly the thing you're going to do forever, right? Correct. Yeah. Yes. I, I bet you've worked with my mother too. I almost hate to bring it up, but. Oh, you got to bring it up. You can't. You can't yeah, do no, that. And then I know. Say no. no, no. I, I don't. I, I'm going to save it till we take our break for me to ask the, those questions. But sure. now you brought. You, I know. You I know. It. But my mom was a union organizer for uh, SEIU, and it sounds like oh. you're kind of in that world. So Amy, Amy Bodner is her name, but uh, she also know. had a a long working relationship. I mean, she's a little older, I assume. But um, sorry, ma. <laughs> well, well yeah Uh-oh. she's a lot older i mean <laughs> you know this neil looks pretty young um <laughs> oh no i know <laughs> mom um anyway she she worked with wellstone for a long time too and and mondale before that and was a union organizer at sciu like i say so wow. you maybe cross paths i, I would guess yeah, maybe, because even I've been around, um, they have the retirement council, and if she goes to any of those meetings or anything. <laughs> she retired and, um, recently, and I think she's out for a few years. I'm sure she may might have caught in. the tail end of <laughs> yeah. that one, you know, yeah. like as she was she's leaving like, the door. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, you know, working really hard to try and get people to see things a certain way all your life, and, you know, pretty deeply immersed into it, I think that can be a little... It can be a little tough. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's not easy being in public service. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, now it's we're not. getting it's super not. political. It, not really. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, hardly. No, no hardly. I'm, I mean, I'm about to. No, oh, it drives me okay. crazy when I, when I hear people say that, they, uh, that all politicians are the same and that they hate politics. And it's like, well, but wait a minute. Like, a lot of decisions need to get made that really have a big impact on your life and you you and can't like, hate yeah. every one of those people like you got to get to know them before you just flat out hate you gotta, everybody yeah. you do you have to make those decisions you have to figure out who to vote for and that's how you you know you have to get to know the people yeah we that have are running. actually uh reached out to other political people around town and not had very much success so this is I, yes we're getting oh. there now no i love it yeah. um <laughs> Well, I think, I mean, what you said is definitely important. And I don't think a lot of people um, realize that a couple of years ago, just um, it probably, you know, it matters who's in office and it matters who um, is making the decisions in order to know um, kind of like how it's going to benefit you or not. Yeah, and no one's gonna no one's gonna fit everybody's needs. They're no, no one's gonna be correct. the perfect politician for everybody in town. It doesn't work that way. That's correct. Yeah, but it it often reminds me like I've worked with kids forever, and I've got kids of my own. It kind of reminds me of the the period in one's life when they just like hate all adults, like they they hate their mom and dad, and you're like. Wait a minute, yeah. you mean the people that... I, I witnessed that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't. No one hates no anyone. But, you know, there's a the time when tantrums. kids like to just leave the house, yeah. you know, and do their own thing. That would be the college time. Yes. <laughs> They're right. ready to get out, you know? Yeah, those teenage years where you, where you like, you sort of can't see the forest for the trees or something. You, you look out and you're like, oh, everyone, everything sucks. It's like, well, but... Remember the time you got fed for the first 18 years of your life? And, Wait. And the time you got a car and then that we helped out with this suck. other stuff? Like, did, was that okay for you? Because, like, yeah. I mean, that, to me, that's, you know, saying that, that you hate all politicians or something. Like, well, you, we actually need them. 
because someone has to go to work and do this stuff. And I've been around enough of it to know it's relatively boring, most of it. Uh, but if you don't, if you don't care who does it, then you suffer the consequences. So that's way. that's the challenge, right? How do you how do you get the community to kind of know who you are and 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 interact with them? To to you know, are there other pl- platforms? Are there uh, things that you enjoy? She goes on Legacy Matters podcast, of course. <laughs> like right. that's that's one. That's one. Right. That's I'm, right. I'm, I'm well, yeah, that. She's right. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, I'm. Probably, so I'm involved in different, like, um, community groups, and so even currently, like, I'm on the Richfield Transportation Commission, and then um, a part part of, like, another Richfield group, the Richfield Foundation, but then also a part of um, this other group, Self International, and so I meet different people in different circles, and um, and even um, I'm currently i guess i'm um, the president of my national um alumni association of spelman college in minneapolis st paul and so i meet people that are living in different parts of the area woodbury or um, minneapolis or um, st paul and um i also meet people like at conventions and stuff and so like i've just gotten involved um even though some of the meetings and everything that I go to <laughs> might be boring, um, but <laughs> I shouldn't even say that they're not all that boring, are they? Well, you did say it. So. I know, uh-huh. but they can well, they're just be. talking about an agenda and going through. Right. You know, oh, this is, this is this person's report, and yeah. um, but I think the outside stuff makes um, the inside stuff better. So I've been involved in like planning events and stuff like that. That helps me get to know other people that I'm working w- around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fair. You're an active community member is what you're saying. Yes, maybe too <laughs> <Yeah>. active. <laughs> well, you have to be if you're, well, you know, in that world. Yeah. Are you Are you uh, a proud Spellman alumnus, too? Is that like a... Yes. That, yeah. Yes. Um I mean, you've said you've mentioned it several times. Oh, it sounds yes. like it was probably a great place. Yes, um, and probably that's probably the reason why I um, decided getting involved with the National Alumni Association. Right. So it was, yeah, for the connection. Since I have a connection to the college, even though I'm in Minnesota, like um, just keeping that com- connection. Mm-hmm. And you don't maybe know what we do here. Le- so Legacy Matters is the podcast, obviously. Generally, we just pull people from the community and who want to talk a little bit about their life and legacy. That's our really our thing. And, and the whole the whole idea behind it is to have a bunch of diverse like backgrounds come in so that we can talk to people about what, you know, so we've got what's happening in, in the thing is you can't Minnesota. You can't yeah. wave a stick in Minneapolis without hitting a singer. So we have a lot of singers. <laughs> a lot of entertainers. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of singers in Minneapolis, a lot of band people. So we have a lot of, of band people, but we've had, you know, police and fire and artists and business people and just kind of anyone who might want to come in and talk about life here in the upper Midwest, especially the Minneapolis area. And kind of their own life and legacy right and and the idea is hopefully through sort of long form communication we can just sit and get to know people and then you make connections and other people get to know about you know it's just building empathy basically but we also we also have an app uh that we've put out recently that's the andalin app and and we promote that on here that's fine um and it's it's really a platform but it's a connectivity platform and so we have this huge interest in alumnus Mm -hmm. well any any organization that may have a large alumni base is a really important thing to us so maybe when the mics are off we'll talk to you about that. oh yes yeah (laughs) i don't know it's not as large but um like when you think of all the hbcus or historically black colleges and universities in the area then it becomes more of a number (laughs) but yeah, thanks for spelling. thanks for clarifying that yes. HBCU. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just don't always know what the acronyms are, and I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want. N- neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you get you get so, like 
so someone, yeah, a scientist on, they say something, you get a business person on, they say yeah. something, and you're like, yeah. shit, I don't know what that was. Right. <laughs> yeah. So do you have um, siblings? Do you have, yes, I have yeah. a brother. Okay. And is your brother here then too? No, he lives in North Carolina. Okay. Okay. It's, yeah. a, it's a whole different place. It, yeah. What? You don't have the... Well, you don't have the see. ice and cold. Well, we have to look forward to it. Right. Oh, yeah. You don't at all. <laughs> yeah. Did you go to the state fair this year? Um, No, I didn't go. Yeah. I think I went last year. but yeah. And when I went, I was mostly volunteering so or, you know, helping out. And so it wasn't. So you're helping out at the state fair, too? I did um, last year. Yeah. <laughs> what were you doing? Um, <laughs> what can I say? Well, I guess I was helping with... <laughs> A, a but you don't group. have to say. Yeah, no, you're no, no, no. I, no, I, I should the, never have told you that we don't talk, po- talk politics on like, here. I was at the DFL uh, booth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's that's go. Totally fine. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, we're talking politics. <laughs> I know. Today. Okay, okay. It's true. Let's just let's just. That's do true. It. I never okay. should have said it. What I mean is, we don't get mean about politics. That's oh, that's my okay. only big right. thing. <laughs> so this year at the at the state fair, there was a lot of meanness actually at was the there? I at heard. both booths. Yeah, there was. Ton of stuff going. What did it happen while I was up north, or what? Uh, I I believe so. Yeah, I mean, it just I just saw it recently on the news. Yeah, it's been on the news the last couple of days, I think. But Uh you know, yeah, it sounds like name calling or gestures and yep, yep, just all kinds of stuff. Throwing throwing soda, real a little bit, yep, real adulty out there. Yeah, yeah, there was definitely there's some tension in the air. Is what's so, happening. <laughs> Not that we're talking you about mean, that. But. You mean in today's America, there's tension in the air? Uh, hey, all you have to do is go to the state fair and okay, you can yeah. see it. Right there. Well, we can yes. cut that out. Yeah, everybody. we'll cut that. We, yeah. No, no, we're not yeah, cutting no, it out. I, I, know I mean, we can yeah. cut out the tension because right. enough of this stuff. We're not doing ourselves any good. We're all neighbors. I, right. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully that will help. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not, yeah. none of us are going anywhere. So what are we going to do? Fight forever? It doesn't make any sense. I was... Uh, it's <laughs> just a quick story. <laughs> I never tell quick stories. But uh, I was riding up north with my children, and uh, and you know it's a, it's many hours, and I and I like to talk to them about life and politics and whatever else on the way up. And they and I mean for years they acted as if I was pouring salt in their eye or something about it because they just hated the idea of dad's going to lecture us about politics or something on the way up and. And I usually, I try and make it age appropriate and I try to make it not too serious. But one way we start is by turning on the radio and listening to the news. And so we listen to public radio news for a little bit and, and it's always, it's always real enlightening. And so they, it came on and it was my 12 year old and I, just the two of us. And it's something like, uh, you know, so-and-so got murdered and, I think it was even like raped and killed or something. And then something else happened. And I'm like, Oh my God, I've got to shut this off. This is public radio. I'm not supposed to be, you know, and, and, and my, so I reach over and I go to turn it off. And that usually prompts a conversation. Now it's time for us to talk about life. And, and I said, well, that was a little dark. And uh, my 12 year old said, Oh dad, the news is always sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> you know that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so like, he thinks of it in a different way. Yeah. The flip side. Well, no, he he was he's very sarcastic. He meant uh, yeah. it's always that way. The news is never good. I thought that was kind of cute that he already at 12 years old mm-hmm. understands that it's uh, tough out there. Yeah, and I think that's important, especially in this day and time because there's a lot going on and um, there's a lot of subtle things going on, you know, either based on um, people's unconscious bias or, you know, just different things and s- that they don't realize that the things that they say or do are having an impact in a certain way towards other people. And so I think, um, you know, the news is showing it, CNN, everybody. And so, yeah. you know, um, it's almost becoming more normal for younger people mm-hmm. to pick up on it because of it's just out there all the time. Yeah. So here I'm asking a personal, but uh, do you have kids? No, but no. I have nephews and godchildren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one of those questions. You know? I know. I know. Like, <laughs> well, because yeah, I mean, I don't want to say something and you go, no, or maybe, 
Oh. <laughs> who knows what? Yeah. yeah. Who knows? You don't want to assume. Or maybe you say, you don't assume. yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. yeah. I've got this kid doing all these bad things. Uh, yeah. Same with the marriage and kids question. That's the part of the podcast that I think is, it keeps people on their toes. The fact that we don't do research because then we do get to ask stupid questions without knowing we're asking the stupid question. <laughs> that makes sense yes <laughs> yes that makes sense she's like yeah sam i get it <laughs> all right well uh we have we have uh skipped our way through merrily skipped our way through 30 minutes of recording so let's take just a short break and then sure. we'll, we'll come back yeah see ya bye okay <laughs> Packing for a trip? Let Pack Simply give you a little help by delivering travel safe products directly to your door in an airport security safe pouch. Unbelievably easy and surprisingly simple. Make your life easier. Visit PackSimply.com. All right, all right, all right. Need some help with a construction project? Looking for thoughtful design and honest answers about what is possible and what isn't? Kinetic Design Build is a full-service boutique remodeling service, residential and commercial clients in the Twin Cities. Design and build with a purpose. Visit kineticdesignbuild.com to request a consolation. God, I just like, that That one, all right, that one is definitely not going to be mine. That could be oh, my favorite. I could see. Brought to you by the Andalin app. Preserve your memories, prepare for the future, and share with those you love. Andalyn, uh... Andalyn, now available on the App Store and Google Play. Visit andalyn.app for more information. Want to go on a wilderness adventure with Sam? Or maybe know a group of kids who could benefit from a break from their electronics? Maybe you just need a break from the kids. Visit earthed.org for more information about how to get started. Do you have an idea that you know deserves a digital solution? Finding a partner to help navigate the digital design and application building process can be daunting. Mobile Composer, in partnership with Kinetic Legacy, offers forward-thinking design built on a stable and adaptable compliance platform. Visit mcomposer.com or kineticlegacy.us to get started building the solutions of tomorrow. Enterprise or consumer together, Mobile Composer and Kinetic Legacy offer solutions that work in a language you can understand. Interested in art? James Holmberg is both an artist and an art consultant. Let James guide you to an original work that will come alive in your home. Visit jamesholmberg.com to find out more. All right, we're back for the second half. Welcome back. I said that like a like a podcast person, like a fake <laughs> podcast person. We're back for the second half. Yeah. No. Well, we are. It doesn't really work yeah. with our style. No. But we're back for the second half. We took our little break. Yeah. Happy to have you all <laughs> back with us. Who's Welcome Nia? back. <laughs> it's funny because we always have so much uh, chit chat during the break which is really funny because it's all chit chat during that's what the podcast is yeah it's uh it's a disservice to our podcast listeners because all the best conversation happens during the break they they miss out on all the oh, good stuff oh no. so so with that said you know during the break we were talking about some of the things like you're teaching right now a little bit yes and um, yeah so it's just this policy analyst um type of course and it's for eight weeks and it's just a couple of probably like three to four hours a week or whatever just with this group that's a part of the black civic network in minneapolis and on the other days they're canvassing and doing um like voter registration and they've been up to the capitol um inside of hearings but this is kind of teaching them how to analyze the policy and how to um, present it, you know, in the future with different problems that they're presented with. And this is uh, how long of, of uh, time period are you are you working with this? Pro- 
just for the next month. So yeah. it's, you know, it's a very short um, right. time period. Right. And how did you get in? Is this something that you stumbled into or were, you, or, or were they coming to you like saying, are you going to do this? Well, yes. <laughs> it was kind of um, like I was referred to it and somebody, you know, gave somebody my name and then said, oh, I think she would be a good person to, you know, teach this to our our um, group and then I um, met with the executive director and they um, gave me the book and then had me um, make up a curriculum and then I'm presenting it right now so it's um, so it definitely came from word of mouth and from people that I know so yeah do you uh, are you like us where you end up volunteering most you don't have to answer this question but where you end up volunteering <laughs> most of your time instead of actually yes you're not yes you do yes. you do yeah. <laughs> oh yeah yes. I, I get pulled into a lot of you know volunteering yeah. things yeah <laughs> yeah do you have a favorite one right now that you that you're really liking enjoying well, I definitely like um, the class and the course just because I get to see different people's viewpoints and how they, um, but like their angle on things is different. And even as I teach it, they think of it in a different way. And so then I have to think of other ways um, to present it in order for them to be able to get it in the same way. So that's one of the things um yeah, and I know you've done some mentorship. Too. Yes, yep. and I've done mentorship before um, with the best preps, and that was a lot of e mentoring. So emailing back and forth um, with people um, that were in a high school in Egan, and that was very good because you know giving people advice and um, and telling them about different steps that they need to take in order to get into college and or in order to deal with different things they were dealing with in school and after that get just getting the feedback from the mentees on um i guess them liking our relationship and liking what we went through a long time ago probably like 10 years ago i helped out with the big brothers big sisters program and I'm still in touch with my little sister from that time. But that was also a very good learning experience because even though we did more activities like go to the Mall of America and stuff like that, I was able to show them a different side, you know, to life and show them outside of just being at home and stuff like that. Yeah. And you're still in contact with your big sister then? Yes. Yeah. A little sister. A little sister. Or a little sister. Yes. Big brother. Big sister. No. What? What's going on? <laughs> uh, Jim was adopted, so he doesn't understand family. I don't. <laughs> what? I'm just kidding. What? I had to throw that in there. He did but, just but I was adopted. Re- oh. He did just yeah. recently meet uh, a bunch of his siblings and whatnot oh. that he didn't even know he had. Were you happy that you met them? Yeah. Or kind of? No, no, no. I'm like, very happy. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a cool thing. So. Uh, Thanks, Ancestry.com, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how yeah. it's working today. So Yeah, several of my friends have met their relatives that they didn't know they had or um, family that they didn't know that they had um, off of Ancestry. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting modern DNA phenomenon. Testing. Yeah, everybody's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> it turns out everyone was doing it. Too. Right. That's <laughs> <laughs> Cha-ching! Yes, I got one in there. Oh, oh my God. It, right? Wow. Yeah. Okay, I don't know how what happened all of a sudden. I know. But, I know. Like, what? what? It's happened. the second half. Know. Who knows what happens in the second half? Well, all right, so you're doing so much volunteering. I mean, you are working a lot, but what do you, what are you doing for fun? What's fun? Mm. Like, like, you know, like just for you. Are you a proud Minnesotan? That's what we're getting at. Well, yes, I'm a proud Minnesotan, but well, I like. Of course, um, <laughs> I know she can't say no to that. I know. Yeah. You're running. Um, well, for maybe. fun, I probably, I definitely like going on walks. You know, so I'll even like um, yesterday just went on a walk around like Acomas and so, and like, um, and I like going around like Lake Calhoun and stuff like that. Um, of course, like recently or at least a couple of months ago I had surgery so then I wasn't able to move around as much so it's I feel better now that I'm able to move around so I like that um I think 
I have done a lot of like we were talking about ancestry. I've done ancestry research. And so I used to go to like the family history centers and look up um, different things on the census records. And I've looked at microfiche and stuff, you know, like even at the National Archives in Georgia, because I have a lot of family um, that came out of Georgia during the Great Migration in the 1920s. And so, um, so I've looked up a lot of historical facts and historical things and I did that a lot in my spare time Mm -hmm. which it sounds like you make plenty of you make plenty of room in your life for spare time (laughs) you don't have any spare time (laughs) right now no No, I'm gonna see you I I live right around Lake Nokomis just a couple blocks on the south side you guys are gonna be I'm gonna be riding my bike well you're on the walking path probably so I was going to say, I'll be riding by and be like, hey, who's there? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> You'll be like, who's that crazy guy on the bike? Like, it's true. That? that is likely the way I would <laughs> approach the situation, too. Yeah. So would... right. now, that, now that we've been acquainted officially, uh, what else do you do for fun? What do you got? What do you, got? What do you like about our, our fair cities here, the Twin Cities? I notice I acknowledge St. Paul. Uh oh! <laughs> I did that on purpose, you know. Just be fair. Well, I like the cities. I mean, I also like um, seeing other places. So I like traveling, or you know. Um, so even when I was in college, and both even when I was in law school, I did a year um, at California Western School of Law, and so I was in San Diego, and I stayed at one of my friends in Los Angeles. And over the summer, I worked at LAFLA, which is the Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles. And so even there, like, um, it probably fulfilled me more and made me happy, you know, being around a lot of different people, helping out with their community, um, you know, because it was dealing with a lot of people like on East L.A. and in West L.A. And so I've always liked I guess going to different environments and being around people and experiencing different things. Yeah. You you make me feel like a slouch. Like <laughs> I was in San Diego last weekend. Oh, was. really? So yeah. Okay. Helping Dear anyone? Right. Helping you, anyone? Yeah. Helping myself. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so no, I know. And I'll so. call you out. <laughs> I was helping Amber. Oh, actually, wow. Yeah, with her. Yeah, wonderful. You know, I mean, I didn't really help that much, actually. Yeah. Yeah, on balance, I would guess you aren't much of a help sometimes. But then other times, you know, you got this, but there's this time that you are and this time that you aren't. You know? Right. It's. <laughs> I, I don't know where he's going with this, but. <laughs> or who's Nia's. Like, I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't really get it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what else do we have? What Lots. else? Do we- I mean, during Lost. the break, and this is a part, you know, because we were talking, I mean, what what would you like to see change here? What some of the Ooh, things that are that's interesting and, to you? Big and broad. You I, can, I know yeah, it is. Like, it is. But, but are there some okay. things you I might mean, you're like in to today, change, you know, yeah. like, let's get to the ground. Yeah, I think overall, um, and sometimes it's disappointing, but uh, overall, I think that, you know, our, our state is doing good. Um, and going in a good direction but then I have seen a lot of disparities and there's a lot of um, statistics and things that have come out around that the disparities in employment and and um, education and housing and criminal justice and stuff like that and so I, I definitely would like to see more of an equaling or more of it um, being balanced where you know if 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 you have more of, you know, people of color that are not doing well in school, um, then that means that education and certain things about it needs to change. And so then I would want to see them doing, you know, way better than they're doing now. And I would like for our standings to be different in, um, I guess, some of those polls. So I would definitely like to see that change and then also i think that overall our state um needs to kind of like broaden their horizon on things i think that there's other states that are being that are passing more like 
open-ended you know progressive legislation that's offering other type of opportunities to their citizens and then Minnesota is and and I think that um that that's holding some parts of the state back is that again on sort of the civic side more than you know like with schools and opportunities for people of color and stuff like that more than well, like one example business law and stuff you know right well one it might be tied with business laws but it's also tied with um criminal too yeah. and so like when you um like when you take even though federally it's against the law but you know like marijuana legislation that's been going on across this, the country and there are um u.s congress persons that are trying to pass legislation in order to move marijuana off of the schedule c or whatever you know list yep. in order to make it not be federally um regulated um that in that area you have you know 10 or 11 states that have passed um legislation that allows for people to you know have businesses or to grow or to um you know hire people even for the banks well i guess maybe we're still having issues with the banks accepting the um the companies that are running things but they're just being more open and um with that law and so even you saw it in California where they passed um and they expunged people's records and it like doing some of those actions are changing the dynamics on people's lives mm -hmm. and so we're you know you had 20 or 50 people that might have had a felony and then all of a sudden you know that fell off and even though they've done their time and stuff like that it still changes their outlook in the next few years in their life when it comes to them being able to find um, employment or you mm -hmm. know apply for federal student loans and stuff like that um, especially since some of the um, laws have changed in regards to private and public um, prisons and institutions where now you you're not able to get um, undergraduate degrees and stuff like that so it just changes the outlook on people with people and so I think that um, some of and I've seen you know people talk about this in different meetings or you know people from other areas like um i won't say any areas but just no you know, no no go ahead in northern I, minnesota or, i scared you, know, you so much about politics yeah <laughs> so in different parts of minnesota to not be as open to the idea and saying oh well, my you know constituents would never go for that so no i would not you know vote that way or you know vote to allow you know ex-felons to vote or you know i've seen people say that and yeah. so i just think that um if more people had more of an open mind and um and thought of different things that needs to be changed in order to make everyone's life better or at least some people the marginalized you know society um definitely african americans and native americans to make you know their lives as a whole a little bit better yeah. Oh man. That's there's so much about all of that. I mean, first of all, the laws haven't been applied equitably. So, Correct. if you've got unequal application of the laws, you're getting unequal treatment, which it, and mm -hmm. it doesn't always have to nothing not everything has to be equal, but equity is very important, you know, versus equality. It they're different things, yes. but anyway. Anyway, uh and then not to uh I'm going to, I don't think you said anything offensive. So about our rural Minnesotans oh, no. or Northern Minnesotans, <laughs> no. I really don't think you did, but I think that it's, it's so often the case that we have 70% agreement across the state on a certain issue. But if you frame it one way, you're going to, you're going to excite the political base of one group, especially like, let's say Minneapolis, St. Paul, the city. So then if you frame it this way, then you've, pitted the cities against the rural folk and then the rural folk are like well no this is the way we see it because you've framed it that way and so you end up with despite there being 70 percent agreement or or more 
you end up with the two parties being able to sort of capitalize on the on the kind of semantics of how people disagree in order to benefit their own political party. And I, I hate yes, that because I don't think true. it's it's not fair to paint mm-hmm. it's not fair to paint either segment of the state, the rural people or the city people as being one thing or another there actually there's a quite a bit of diversity in all of these populations but man there's people have clued in on how to sell things to them in a certain way that's for sure you know (laughs) yeah and everyone doesn't understand the definition of like equality versus equity and so i've even been in meetings where you know people are talking about let's say um transportation and how if you're changing a road um how there has to be equity and you know how people are treated with the change and so they've asked a couple times like well what is what's equity you know like what does that mean what's the difference between equity and equality yeah Yeah. and so it's hard for them to wrap their head around it and so when you have people that are you know in leadership positions that that really don't quite understand how everything applies to everyone then it becomes um then you then people get left out yeah mm-hmm. so i mean i think the you know and i'll like, i've said it a million times we don't deal in 100 percent facts here on the, on this show because because i'm not i you don't want to come to me for and knowledge. you definitely don't want to come yeah. to me <laughs> He might be a smidge better. (laughs) (laughs) This is just not all factual here. But um, the classic kind of difference between equity and equality uh, graphic that gets used is the one where you've got the, you know, short person, medium height person, tall person, all standing at a fence trying to see a baseball game or whatever. So equality is... Well, we give them each the same size because the short guy and the medium sized guy can't see over the fence. Right. right? The- so you give them each the, the same size box. Now, that's, you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, I, I shouldn't even say it, but it's that's more social communism, right? Like give everyone equal or something, even though that doesn't work out. But you just like, you can't look at things always in the everybody deserves the equal thing you actually need to give the short person the a tall box bigger box <laughs> and the and the tall person the tiny box and the middle guy the middle box so that everyone you know so they can all, all see, see over at the same time yeah. and then there's the whole one where they just like plow the fence down and and, and they're all just sitting there <laughs> on the just, grass like well, oh, well, they that's get the a lawn chair yeah. and actually can they sit can down see. and watch yeah. the game and they're all enjoying it <laughs> yeah. you know but and i don't i don't do a perfect job that was pretty good actually i kind of like that that was that was all right i just think it gets you thinking about like what like there are school districts in the state that that whether they're rural or urban that might require more resources to get the kids up to speed to get to get things you know Mm -hmm. to get more equity well no to get more equality and outcome through equity and giving if that makes sense. Isn't that right? You're the law yes. major. You get the law degree. <laughs> yeah, I think there's... Wow, talk about putting know, you on the spot know, all of a sudden. Uh, You're like, should okay, I know that Sam. already? I'm like, should I know it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think... I mean, and I think you touched on it before about um, everyone being treated equally let's say you know under this under law under the color of law or whatever and so like you do have people in positions that have unconscious bias um and they think of different people in different ways and so it might make them not give funding you know to certain people or it might make them um not teach you know certain people certain things because they're thinking oh they don't need to know this or um you know, just different stuff like that, or, um, and it, and it does make them sometimes hold back from, let's say, giving somebody food or, or just anything. And so, and there's, there, there's just different things that come into play. And when you have certain people, and I'm not talking about anybody in particular or anything, yeah, but yeah. just like, um, you know, you have certain people in position, you know, even when it comes to let's say criminal justice or something and they're giving 
different people's sentences, you know, that even though they have the same crime or um, just different things, just based on how they look, you know, and who they are. Um, And so it, all of those things um, like makes more of a disparity. So like, let's say if you had, uh, you know, somebody that came in and, you know, they had the same crime as someone else, but somebody they got one year and then somebody else got five years, but it was the same exact thing. Um, you like you're treating them differently or if, um, or if you're so even like how in New York, when it came to the central park five and how those guys, you know, really didn't, or they, you know, were exonerated. They didn't commit that crime, but they were pegged as, Oh, you know, tell this story and and we want you to be the people that actually did it and so you know like they were made to be the people um it's just based off of something else more deeper you know than just um the equality thing but it but it's you know and plus it shows that it might be difficult to remove that from the system or remove it you know completely but i think that so that's one of the things that probably needs to change um and that's kind of a long <laughs> no, you know description but there's other things as far as um you know making sure that the the city and the state keeps up with the times you know like we've changed some of the roads and stuff like that and i think that that's good um it's unfortunate that <laughs> some times construction has to appear um in multiple places at the same time instead of them completing you know one stretch of the highway and then coming back and doing but but there is equality in that because it sucks for everyone doesn't it i mean like no one no one gets a free pass there's no like you can't go anywhere extra and go around go around the construction (laughs) although the city could generate money you know, <laughs> yeah, who some knows? sort of helicopter service was, from it, one place to another. It's like you read flying my mind. Cars. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Cars. Yeah. That's it. Uh, I'm, I'm actually with Elon Musk on that's way too loud. You can't make it. He's right. He's right. You can't. Anything that flies, even, even a tiny little uh, jetpack. Well, jetpack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you see that thing? Oh, not to get totally off topic, but did you see the thing where uh, some French dude made a hoverboard? That he flew in front of the, like on Bastille Day or something. He flew it in front of, I, I say that like I know what I'm talking about, about France. But it was a big deal. He He's the inventor of this thing. Yeah. And it's like a, it's like almost like a wakeboard or surfboard size board that he's on that that he flies. He's got little things and he flies. Yeah, it's a and, hand, hand remote thing. Yeah. Right? I mean, this yeah. is, this is, you know, this but is it, the endeavors of a, of a, I've seen those. No, this is this is like brand new. This is not water jets underneath. This is a very big deal that this guy did it. So he can fly on land. He can fly above land. Okay. Yep. Without and, it, and, and over people without like. Psh, well, know. so no, he comes in and the and the the video coverage of it on the news is like, look, the French inventor of the hoverboard. Like this is modern technology. Here it is. It's so cool. And they've got like uh, Macron or whoever the French president is sitting there and, and the guy comes down the boulevard and it's like <laughs> yeah yeah right i mean everybody's like it's a little bit much like you wouldn't want to be standing <laughs> under it or near it can you imagine if your car lifts off the ground it just takes so much energy so until they yeah. invent okay, some sort so of dark we're all magic in the same the lighter, the same car. you know deal here oh, with the, with yeah. the construction Traffic. so yeah yeah there's no way around it yep i had i i know i had other things i was gonna touch on about the other stuff you were saying though i just can't quite remember it i got all Hover. wrenched out yeah <laughs> i don't know where it came from <laughs> <laughs> can't fly the cars yeah. yeah, what were you talking about? Um, <laughs> we were talking about the areas that that we would change in the city. Um, so some of the laws, or, actually, or some, some of the laws. laws. Yeah. Oh, I know what yeah. I was going to say. Uh, I need, I need s- to know. season three <laughs> of Serial. If you're into that sort of stuff, if you listen to podcasts and you're listening to ours right now, don't forget that uh, season three of Serial. 
is a public radio produced uh podcast and they and and the third series or third season they deal with sort of they tackle very thoughtfully uh kind of the criminal justice system i think it's down in missouri and it it's super interesting just i i give them credit i don't feel like they went into it overly biased this way or that way they're just talking about what's going on Mm -hmm. just want to hear it and um yeah, I think it was after Ferguson, and maybe that's why they were down in Missouri. But anyway, the, just just the just listening to how oh my gosh, much it affects people's lives to get one minor infraction, and then this happens, and now you're in the system, and then it's you just keep going through. Oh my god, completely, and then you can't through. get out. Yeah, you know, and, and I like don't you, see the benefit in that for any of us. Like that doesn't, well, I, you it, know, it doesn't. I always worry about my my biases that I was born with that I, I don't even know. I get awkward in certain situations. I don't, you know, I don't have a massively diverse group of friends. I have a pretty diverse group of friends, but like there's things that could be better, but I I always worry about whether I'm going to do or say the right thing. But I, I can clearly look out at the world and say, there's some things we're doing not right. And, and that's one of them, you know, that that's just not working. School lunch is another one that, ticks me off and like giving kids time to play at recess and like understanding the interaction between exercise and learning and food and learning and these things that just really help kids out and those are all things i'd I'd like to work on if i could get after that you know i think it's getting better but well at least so i'm hearing more about the food deserts you know in certain parts of the it's minneapolis and other areas um you know where they might have had a larger um grocery store there and then now a smaller one came in but it's more expensive and it's hard you know for that family to find more affordable food you know and Mm -hmm. so then they have to either you know spend money and gas to drive somewhere else or you know something and i know now there's more deliveries going on i mean you know we have everybody delivering food and stuff but then that's a cost that and is that expensive cost. um and i think one thing that's getting a little bit better um is feeding children so you know they're at least in the last couple of years you've heard more you know news stories and stories about children coming to school and not you know, having anything to eat and stuff like that. And I think more people are um, helping out in that area in which I think is a good thing. And that needs to continue because it helps, you know, the, the child learn in the morning Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Nothing worse than being a hungry kid. Yeah. I mean, that's. So hopefully we can, even for activities for children after school, hopefully that can improve. In the next few years, I know it seems like there used to be more of that at the parks Mm -hmm. and then that went down and um, hopefully it's coming back a little bit more. Um, And so like hopefully we can have more activities and things for them to do. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it often. And so, I mean, even if you separate out populations of people in, in the ways that we tend to separate out populations, rural versus urban or, you know, black and white or this community versus that community. At at the end of the day, uh, everybody wants the kids to do well. And they, and they tend to want their own kids to do well, you know, <laughs> which is yes. a little bit, can be a little bit of a problem. But um, if you just take one tiny little step back, it, we really should all want for all kids to do better because that produces just a far better society. And and the dividends it takes a while for that to pay off. I get it, but it is so worth it, you know? So mm-hmm. yeah, if we can make those investments, that'd be great. That would be an ideal world. And I'm sure that's a whole, a totally another conversation, especially yeah. when it comes to um, just the whole dynamic of what occurs when you're kind of like living in a society that a lot of people have been prejudiced and racist and stuff like that in the past and so then you do have certain groups of the population like african americans that are left out um 
each time. So, it, and by each time, I mean, you know, new immigrants come to the United States, but they're treated better, you know, than African Americans. They're allowed to have business loans, and they can start treated their own better schools. Than, than Africans, African Americans, currently or historically? Currently, currently and historically, and so um, because even today, you know, it's difficult for people to get business loans and so other things like is there some is there some sort of anger within the community too within the black community like oh this group because we all everybody has something going on out i there. don't know <laughs> if it's particular i haven't heard anything any particular i've just heard um because there's new waves of people you know coming to the united states yep all the time and so um it's almost like a respect type of thing or you know kind of like when is there going to become a time when everyone is looked at equally and um kind of like with the equity thing so like you know if you're having open arms to others that you know just came to the country or whatever then when are you going to treat the people that have historically been in the united states the same as you know with new people yep yeah and i think uh and this goes back to something you said earlier but i think like a lot of times we don't recognize that that some of the biases and some of the some of the prejudice is really really around uh really wealth or lack of wealth it's you know a lot of times you've got one community of of one ethnic background or color or however you want to put it because you know Mm. it and another community and really they're both being treated like shit because ultimately it's the it's the lack of wealth that is more or less the problem not Mm. not wealth but just lack of ability to just kind of maintain and live a life in a you know, certain way to a certain level. I don't know. Yeah. And I think that different people, um, so they might, so different groups of people that may not be a part of the majority, you know, which would be, you know, um, white Americans, like, um, they are welcomed in a different way. So like I've recently saw something, um, I think, I think it was on like, PBS but it was like a clip and it was talking about it was talking about the Jim Crow of the North and it was talking about Minnesota and the restrictive covenants um, that were placed on land and it talked about a couple of different families that moved into areas in South Minneapolis and how outraged the community was um, you know on their presence. I think I saw this too and I was shocked. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, I didn't know that happened. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. I did. I, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. I was just listening to that yeah. the other day. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that that, I didn't know that about yeah. that. At and all. It actually, well, it's aside from what I was trying to say, but so, <laughs> yeah. okay. So what I was trying to say <laughs> is that, um, well, I'll just say the other thing. Okay. So when I was running for office in 63B, I did have a couple of residents come to me and say, um, oh, you know, I signed my deed, you know, for my house so quickly. I didn't even know. But I saw when we went back and looked at it that it it's restricts us, you know, from selling it to black people. And so, um, and they were shocked and just, you know, amazed about that. And that was one of the reasons why, you know, they wanted to vote for me. You mean that's still on a deed? It's permanent. It permanently follows the it, owner. Is it on the deed still? It's I, in I the. Wasn't... It's in the language. It, yeah. Okay. Okay. Because with that project, <laughs> I think they found over a thousand different pieces <laughs> right. of languages yeah. around it. Sure. Yep. Um, well, that ain't that ain't right. So it might not. <laughs> it's not enforceable federally because yeah. right. there's a federal right. law against it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but it never got removed out of there. And there actually was several um, of the state legislators that I was trying to come up with, you know, a, a policy or law in order to override it completely. Um, in the last couple of years, okay. they're trying to do that. But uh, what else? I want to just. I just okay. want to remind our listeners that it's 2019. Okay, go ahead. Okay. 
<laughs> I mean, what the hell? It's almost 2020. It's yeah. almost 2020, and you were trying to get people to remove a covenant that says they can't sell the black people from yeah. a deed written. Oh, my God. Yeah. Anyway. And they said fair. that 100% of the ones that they've viewed restricts them from selling it to a black person. But there's other language in there, like Mongolian and other people, mm-hmm. and some of them. But for all of them, it says, you know, restricts from black people person but what i was going to say is that (laughs) in that instance and even in other instances like if you think about like emmett till and other people you know that have um you know been lynched or or drag away from the drug away from their family um there's a certain um there's certain people that are enraged when they see black people in um, in are around them and stuff like that and so if they see them getting anything you know extra so like if we have reparations um, and there's groups of people that are trying to pass reparations bills like um, there's certain people that just get enraged by that so it's it's it definitely is like a prejudice type of thing but um, it, that reaction doesn't come with other people so like with other people like how we talked about immigrants and yeah. other people other classes of people oh sure yeah. so it for there's something that like boils up or stirs them you know like either if they're seeing somebody whistle at somebody or see someone in, in a restaurant or um i've seen people like freeze up you know like around me or even on the marta in atlanta um so there's a lot of different things that in different reactions that people have instantly. And so it is like an unconscious bias thing. Um, but it is very, it's very stark, you know, when it happens. Yeah. And, and I don't want to get myself into any sort of trouble trying to take anything away, but I, you know, we, we all do something right. And, mm-hmm. and so there's, I think because I'm just straight up middle-aged white dude, like people have reaction to me too, whether it's good or bad or, you know, it's just, it's just a part of our human makeup to draw conclusions sort of immediately about someone you don't know without taking the time to, to fully get to know them. But yeah, I think the difference is that the, um, you know, the whole government has, uh, has been, so it's been a part of the whole government all along oh yeah <laughs> oh i'm not taking anything away from right. the white privilege well, thing like, no i i realize that we're the, not gonna give money to these people <laughs> right. and, you know like it's just no generally like, speaking the reaction that that me as a middle-aged white guy receives is is a much <laughs> much here more comes that old dude yeah. yeah no 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 i i i'm not yeah. saying you know yeah, yes it's totally there it's absolutely <laughs> there i totally get that i'm just saying like it would be nice and and we should wrap up, but it would be nice to uh, to live in a world where that was lessened on all fronts, and that there was again more equity, right. more and which led to more equality, and then and then we were not having to continually have these same conversations over and over and over about yeah. race and disparity and inequity and all the rest of it. So we'll just keep on the path forward, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, uh, was, you, know, you, you came in here today, you had no idea what to expect. I know. We talked for an, a little over an hour. <laughs> Are you okay? Did it all work out? Yes. Yeah. It did. <laughs> Good. Because I sure enjoyed it, and uh, I really appreciate yeah. you coming in. Is there anything we do? Uh, some of our guests are in need of you know doing some self-promotion. They do a lot of self-promotion. A lot of them, yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, typically if you're going to come talk that, to people, that's, what that's it's about. part of the reason. So is there anything you would like to promote, <laughs> Yeah, actually, right now? Um, and, and that could be yeah. even some of the, the things that you're working with. Yeah, you know, a new CD. I mean, it's, <laughs> well, no, but, but also, oh, yes. you know, yeah. you know, there's, there's a need for, this is something I know we were talking about earlier, is that there's a need for other people to kind of volunteer some of their time towards some of these yeah. things that you're active in right now, currently. Yeah, I would say, what can I promote? So um, definitely, you know, like I've 
with the teaching and different things I'm doing, I'm doing more consulting. So it's through um, what's called like Latifa Enterprises LLC. So I'll promote that. And then also um, in the future, I mean, I don't know exactly um, what my political aspirations will be in the future, but I know that, you know, I'll become a delegate, you know, next year and, and then see if I will run for the national delegate um, seat again um, and that kind of stuff. Um, definitely, you know, if anybody has whatever interests people have, it, it might be with, you know, food banks or in food shelves or even, you know, helping you know, feed the needy or even um, raising money or it's dropping things off that people may be in need of. Um, I would promote that in volunteering more in your community. But then also, I don't know, I know everybody doesn't have as, I don't know if it's time or energy or, no, but it's there's, energy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, no, energy. we all have it's roughly a, the same amount of time in a day. You yeah. just tend to put yours to a different use than a lot of people, it sounds like. Yeah, I would also just talk about, so there's this one organization called Cut 50 um, that I've been, you know, following. And I think that's a good thing even to look into. They've already passed in um, three or four different states and they just did with Tennessee on providing um, different essentials for women that are in prison. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like if the prison isn't giving them sanitary napkins and stuff like that. And so they're um, working on passing bills along that. So if you find, you know, different organizations like move on or something that you feel passionate about, or even men three fifty, you know, something about the environment, um, I would just um, suggest or that people get involved and lend their voice and help with the directions that um, some of the organizations are taking. I think that's awesome. That um, is. I absolutely do not want to end this on one of my terrible, you know, oh just, but here it comes. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> I just wonder, <laughs> is there, is there any other situation where, where other than female inmates, where we refer to tampons and pads as sanitary napkins why do we why do we throw that politeness in there as if i, I don't I, I, as if it's the I, most terrifying thing. even women say. do it even women do it it's not terrifying it's they it turns out women menstruate and then they they need these things which yeah. are pads yeah. and tampons right and yep. then they don't give them to them in prison yes and then we say, well, they should give them sanitary napkins. And then the kids are like, well, they fucking don't even give them napkins. Like, no, these are a different type of napkin. <laughs> oh, my God. I was Neil laughing on this one. <laughs> Maxi pads. Yeah. yeah give yeah, them we to Maxi them. Pads. For yes. Christ's sake. Yes. Like, come on. <laughs> give them to them. It's okay. You you right. know what? You can always count on Sam to just bring it down. <laughs> on into, you know, just keeping it real. You know, it's, you Maxi know, pads and tampons. Yeah. <laughs> like they need them. I get that. And yeah. other things. All right. You too. I can't believe, I can't believe that we, we, we no, Sarah, we, let's, let's, we got to say something. We just got to say how great the weather is today. And thank you for coming in. That's how we're going to. Yeah. It was a great sign. podcast. All right. Well, Thank Thanks. you. Yes. Thank you. We en- really, really enjoyed having you in. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. We love comments and feedback, so go ahead and let us have it. If you'd like to learn more about Andalin and other legacy projects, visit the website at andalin.app or kineticlegacy.us. Take care.